All right, Erin, you may begin. Okay, thanks, Steph. If you could go ahead and pull up our presentation. And while you're doing that, I'll welcome everyone that's joining us virtually on YouTube. Um, this is the Ninth Avenue open house public meeting. Obviously, we are conducting this virtually, so thanks for, for joining us. I'm sorry that we can't be together in person, but I think this will, this will work for tonight. If you could go to the next slide, Steph. Uh, my name is Erin Fosdick, and I'm a principal planner with the city of Longmont. I'm helping to facilitate the meeting tonight. So this is a, an overview of what we hope to get through tonight. We have a short presentation for you, and then obviously we'll have time for public comments and questions. So we are joined by a number of other city staff, and you'll hear from Len, Tyler, and Alden during the course of the presentation. And so I'll let them introduce themselves and talk about what the role within the project is. But I also want to note that we have um, Becky and Steph that are helping provide the behind the scenes support for the virtual meeting. So thanks so much for doing that to both of you. And then we also have Jim, Caroline, uh, Phil Greenwald from planning. Um, and who else am I missing here? Um, my participants list disappeared. Um, from um, Public Works and Natural Resources. And so while they won't be necessarily presenting tonight, if there are specific questions, I'll invite Phil, Jim, or Caroline to, to jump in and answer questions. Um, the meeting overview is obviously virtual. In just a second, I'll go through some housekeeping to let you know how to call in when it's time to do that. Um, the other information that we're gonna cover, I'll set the stage really quickly and just provide a little bit of context around some of our citywide transportation goals and plans. And then we'll really dive into the project specific information. So we'll hear from Tyler about some of the existing conditions and the project purpose. Um, we'll hear from Len, who's really gonna go over some of the information on the project um, specific. So you'll be able to zoom in and see some of the plans. At this point, the, the plans are pretty far along, and so I do want to note that. We're not going to go through the detail for every section, but we do have that information. If you want to zoom into a specific area tonight, we can absolutely do that. We also have that information on our website, so if you're interested in a specific configuration for a, a certain segment of the street, um, that's available online, and we can let you know where that is. What we're talking about tonight, obviously, is Ninth Avenue from Hover to Kaufman. Um, and so Len will go through some of that. And then Alden will kind of close the, the presentation portion, talking about next steps and the schedule for the project. And then um, the exciting part, we'll get to your questions and comments. And Steph, if you could pull up the next slide. Um, this is really how we're going to work this. So for those of you who may have participated in another virtual meeting with the city, this is going to work very similarly to that. Um, you don't need to worry about writing all this information down at this point. We'll put this slide up again at the end of our presentation with this information. Um, when we conclude our presentation, we'll take a short break to give you all time to call in. You'll dial in using the toll-free number um, that's on the screen here. And again, we'll put this information up again. You'll enter the meeting ID and then you'll be placed into the queue. Um, unlike council, we don't have a specific time limit for people. Um, I do ask that you be respectful of your neighbors. And if you have a ton of questions, that's completely fine. But maybe limit your initial comments or questions to one or two, just so we can make sure to hear from everyone tonight. And then you'll just get back in the queue. So don't hang up. Um, you'll just press star nine. It'll raise your virtual hand. And that'll be an indication to Steph and I that you have something else to say. And we'll once we get through the queue, we'll call back on you. And we can do that as many times as we need to to make sure we get all your questions answered and, and hear your comments. Um, we have received an, a few comments from folks already. So some of those things may be addressed during the meeting, but if certainly if you have things, um, we'll, we'll be excited to hear from you during this portion of the meeting. One last thing to note, and I'll remind you of this again when we get to this portion of the meeting, um, go ahead and mute your live stream once you call in because otherwise you can get some um, pretty nasty feedback that won't be pleasant for you. If you go to the next slide, Steph, we'll go ahead and, and sort of dive into the content. And as I mentioned, I just want to set the stage quickly to talk about um, some citywide transportation goals and plans. Obviously, as you know, transportation is extremely important to Longmont. And so we do have a number of plans that address various aspects of our system and really set the stage for completion of projects like what we're going to talk about tonight 
along Ninth Avenue. Um, we have some pretty specific plans like the enhanced multi-use corridor plan that was accepted in 2018. And this really talks about how do we transform specific corridors within the city to provide safe, comfortable, low stress bike and ped facilities. We also have um, our most recently completed plan, which is our equitable carbon-free transportation roadmap. This really provides a, a, a roadmap to address our transportation needs, but also looks at how we do that while mitigating the impacts of the climate crisis. And so those are examples of two of our more specific transportation focused plans. We also have some broader plans that discuss transportation within them. And I'd like to call your attention to it, our Envision Longmont Multimodal and Comprehensive Plan. This plan really is our city's guiding vision for how we will grow and develop into the future. And one of the main guiding principles within this plan is a complete balanced and connected transportation system. And so within this, we think about a number of goals, including how do we provide safe, healthy, reliable, reliable mobility for everyone in Longmont? And how do we do that in a way that makes sure we're being responsible stewards of our limited resources and your limited resources? And so I think a project like the NAM, Ninth Avenue um, improvements that we're talking about tonight illustrate kind of the um, framework by which we're putting projects through and how we're attempting to do projects that meet these citywide goals. Um, if you have more questions about that, Phil, and I can certainly speak to that, but that's just to provide a little bit of context. So with that, I'd like to ask Tyler to come on. Um, we'll shift and talk a little bit about some of the existing conditions and the project purpose. If you wanna pull up the next slide, Steph, I'll turn it over to Tyler. Yeah, thanks for the introduction, Aaron. Tyler Stamey, Transportation Engineering Administrator for City of Longmont. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to, to share information tonight and want to touch on just expanding a little bit more on kind of the big picture. So if, if you're familiar with Ninth Avenue west of Hover, you'll notice in the last year we did some events out there where we added um, we added some bike lanes and did some winding to, to really try and make a better uh, multimodal connection from that starting kind of the west end of airport over to Hover. And this is really kind of the extension of trying to continue that through along Ninth Avenue through, through the, the middle of town. So really looking at the section from Hover uh, roughly to Kaufman. And then I'll talk a little bit about what, what we're doing, why we're doing it. And then I'll talk really about the how, kind of the nuts and bolts of, of what we're looking to do. Um, as we look at this section, it's one where the pavement, in order to kind of keep the pavement, preserve the pavement life and get, get the best lifespan, life cycle cost of the pavement, we're going to be placing a chip seal, which you've, you're probably familiar with, and Alden will be on later to talk about a little bit more about the chip seal. But but that really gives us an opportunity to start over with striping. So when we put that chip seal on, we've got uh, a clean slate to start with. And so as we're we're talking about doing that, we're looking at how do we, without doing any major or any road widening within the existing limits of what we have, how do we improve the facility? And definitely some of the the aspects we looked at have been safety in the corridor. We do have. Some, some crashes along the corridor. We've had, we've definitely heard from, from residents over the years about looking to get improved bike facilities or even bike facilities through this portion of town or on Ninth Avenue. And then also we've heard from residents along Ninth Avenue where I'll admit I've walked the sidewalks as well, but that sidewalk is pretty narrow along Ninth Avenue and it feels really close to traffic if you're walking on night, uh, particularly in the four lane section where there's no parking buffer. It's it's a, a narrow, narrow sidewalk, and you feel like your elbow is about to get uh, pretty close to traffic on some of those. And so, what we're really looking at doing is a combination of, uh, you know, Ninth Avenue is a bit of a hodgepodge. It's, it's sort of two lane on the west end. We have a four lane and a five lane section in the area we're looking at, and, and really looking at how do we make that a three lane section. We've had success with some other projects in town with a similar treatment. You're, probably familiar with the section of Francis. If you go north on Francis, just north of Ninth, you'll see a similar, similar treatment to what we're looking at doing for Ninth Avenue. And really that three lane, that the center turn lane does a lot of benefit in terms of being able to access. There's a lot of driveways, a lot of residential access where your, your primary driveways are right onto Ninth Avenue. You might be onto, right onto a four lane or um, pulling out of your driveway from behind a parked car to, to get onto the road. So really, having that third lane to be able to, to get out of, out of the through traffic, to be able to pull over and have a clear view of what's coming really helps. Uh, next slide, please. And one intersection in particular, I mentioned Ninth and Francis, and, and this is a signalized intersection. 
And again, you're, you guys live on Ninth Avenue. You're probably familiar with this intersection. This is one of the high crash locations in town. Each year we do we uh, do a statistical analysis of all the crashes throughout town and try to find out which ones are statistically um, high crash locations. And this is one that is. And so when we look at those crash patterns and crash types, one of the things that really sticks out here is almost 40% of the crashes involve east and west left turns. The, the volume of that left turning traffic east and west is pretty low. And I'm sure you've noticed the sign up there. You can kind of see it in this picture on here. We don't allow the left turn from 4 to 6 p.m. because we do have a pretty high volume of through traffic. And obviously we've had some crashes during those hours as well. So the, the sign might not be the most effective tool to prevent those crashes. So when we look at the three lane section, it's an opportunity to provide that, that le dedicated left turn, which is an effective solution towards that particular crash type. And then we also noticed out of those 40% of crashes, 60% of the injury crashes at this intersection were the least west left turn. So that's really important point that, that why we're doing that change and, and why I really want to focus on this intersection. This is a really good opportunity to get a pretty good bang for the buck in terms of really big safety improvements uh, at an overall minimal cost to the city. And in, in conjunction with that, we, um, we were successful in obtaining a grant with CDOT. So we've got some additional dollars coming in. So the first part of this, the traffic signal won't change. It'll still be the green lights, but then we will be coming back later in the year or early next year with the new replacing the signal poles and we will be able to add a, a flashing yellow arrow across that left turn lane for east-west. So you'll see that it's that's coming a little bit later, but some additional changes you'll see here. Uh, next slide, please. And again, just a slide to kind of show some of the conflict points that you get when we look at a four-lane four lane highway or four-lane four lane roadway, there's a lot of opportunities for cars to crash. You can crash changing lanes, you can crash turning, and then you also see kind of the bottom left picture on there where you have that condition of four lanes with no turn lane where it's definitely a setup for a crash. Your sight distance is sort of limited by the, the car and the, the lane nearest to you, and it's hard to see that far lane the traffic moving. So when you look at the bottom right, you'll see that green car there where it's kind of it's in its own lane. You've got a clear view of the oncoming traffic. So those are what we're seeing for overall reduction of conflict points. So the, the less opportunities you provide to crash, the less crashes generally happen with that. Next slide, please. And I mentioned the existing condition. So we have, have on here some traffic volume numbers. Obviously the, the west side the, from Hover roughly to Francis Street is a, is a two lane section. There is a left turn lane at sunset. And then if you're traveling eastbound, it widens to the four lanes right at Francis. So we see Traffic volume is about 12,000 a day in that section. And I went back to look through some historical data. And quite frankly, since about 2007, we've not seen a lot of change. It's been relatively consistent right around, oh, about 11,500 to 12,000 since about 2007. So even though Longmont's grown a lot, we've seen a lot of development. This particular section of Ninth Avenue, it's gone up a little bit, but definitely not as much as the rest of the city has probably grown. Similar, the further you move east, we do see the volumes kick up. You've got 13,000 cars a day east of Francis, and then you're really getting over towards main streets where we see the 15,000. So as we get into the striping plans a little bit later, you'll see we'll keep, we're keeping the, the additional lanes once you get closer to main street, but really trying to, to reduce the number of lanes as you're getting more into the neighborhood, kind of west further away from main street. And I think one of the other things I want to mention that I forgot earlier was the, you know, the four lane we've definitely heard and it can set up kind of the feel of side by side driving and you have one person trying or one driver trying to beat the other driver to to a point where the lane drops or opportunities of four lane sections. So when we go down to the three lane section, it provides a lot more continuity, a lot less differential in speeds. You've got people in the one lane, single file lane. So it, it does help that it doesn't solve all of the issues, but it's definitely a tool that we have to help help mitigate some of those issues. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Lynn. Thanks, Tyler. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Len Marcus. I'm, with, I'm a civil engineer for, with the Public Works and Natural Resources. Uh, tonight, I'm going to um, 
take a few minutes of your time and brief you on some of the design changes planned for Ninth Avenue. Um, so the slide Tyler ended on, uh, that section of Ninth Avenue, uh, we do show sections there to all kind of touch base on section one through four. Um, now, these sections will have its own slide, but what I want you to keep in mind here throughout this whole, my, my um, information here is that the, uh, this whole corridor is, we will be removing the parking. So other than there's a two half blocks that will have some parking, but for the most part, all the parking will be removed. Uh, next slide, please. So this slide shows the start of the project as we move, uh, we'll say it's starting at Hover and going east. Um, but again, from this point on east, we're gonna remove on-street parking and kind of enhancements here include new bike lanes and center lane. Uh, Tyler kind of uh, touched base more on, uh, he kind of, the, the advantages of the center lane and how the uh, safety concerns are for that, we'll enhance that. Um, <clears throat> what this does add is the uh, extended center lane to the east, which will assist with um, some of the stacking for that turning, turning traffic going south. And what it does also is it helps with the westbound traffic um, not having to jockey around for a position as they cross, as they move forward, as they continue west um, and without the turners blocking this particular movement. So um, there is some parking just east to here, but next slide, please. This uh, we can call section one, um, over to just west of Francis. Um, this section include, will include an added center lane and new bike lanes. Uh, the new center lane will help increase, again, help increase the safety. And as we're gonna say over and over here, it, it really benefits the turning traffic into driveways and other cross streets. These are one of the things uh, a lot of residents complain about and have issues with and have accidents. You know, I've talked to a handful that uh, near misses. So we're real excited about improving the safety along this corridor with the center lane. Um, next slide, please. Uh, this slide, uh, call number two, Ninth Avenue to just west of Francis. Um, the changes here include a small section um, that there will be parking. And this is adjacent to the uh, Congregational Church uh, or just at the church just west of uh, Francis Street there. Um, and there is a section that there will be available parking east to the, uh, almost to the intersection of Francis. Um, of course, we'll have the added bike lanes, the center lane, and the start of a new eastbound turn pocket at Francis. And if you look to the top right, you'll see a, a detail there that um, kind of shows the turn pocket um, approaching the intersection. <laughs> Next slide, please. This uh, section of roadway from Francis to Venice uh, will change from the existing four lane roadway to the new three lane section. Again, we're promoting the same safety enhancements um, for bikes and traffic turning from the, the center lane. Uh, there are some subtle changes we don't show on this plan that kind of dives into this last and final slide. Um, this slide removes, again, we're removing the on-street parking. It adds the bike lane, but it keeps the five lane section. So it kind of pairs down or which way are we going? So we're going from a three to a four and now for this five lane section. Um, so the bike lanes are included in each of these. And, um, but ultimately the bike lanes do end at uh, Kaufman. They do not continue east. 
So uh, generally that's kind of the, the, the proposal or not proposal, the design we have um, planned for the upcoming construction season. Thanks. I think that concludes my, uh, my piece here and I'll be glad to answer questions as we move to the end of the presentation. All right, thanks, Len. Um, good evening, my name is Alden Jenkins. I'm a senior civil engineer with the city of Longmont. And now that Len and Tyler have explained what changes to expect uh, on the project, I'd like to briefly review when to expect them, the changes, and what construction impacts to anticipate. Uh, a lot of you have probably noted already, we've already completed some preparatory work uh, on this segment of Ninth Avenue in the form of crack seal. We have a few more uh, or a couple more minor scopes of work yet to complete uh, with this project and those will be ongoing here shortly. These minor scopes won't be widespread at all uh, and they're very well limited to specific areas on the project so not widespread impacts at all just yet. Uh, so for once we actually start the project fully, uh, the first major activity that you'll see though would be the application of a liquid asphalt emulsion it would be, be applied directly to the existing roadway, as you can see in the photo shown on the screen here. Uh, within seconds of applying that asphalt emotion, uh, emulsion, uh, small pieces of aggregate or chips, as they're called, which is where the name chip seal comes from, uh, they'll be precisely spread over the emulsion. Uh, and if Steph, you click, show up, a, bring up another photo that shows that process there. And one of the great things and features about chip seal uh, is that it can be driven over immediately after the application. And that goes for construction, uh, not only construction equipment and vehicles, but also uh, general public. And what that means is that there will be virtually no delays in accessing driveways or cross streets while we come through and do this process. It's a very quick application process uh, from one end to the other. So after the chip seal is applied, it will need to set for 24 hours, during which time vehicles should drive slowly due to loose, loose aggregates. Uh, but the next day, these loose aggregates will be swept up and disposed of, at which point a final asphalt sealant or fog seal is applied that makes the whole roadway black. Uh, and then it, it's at this point as well that final striping changes uh, that we've reviewed tonight would be implemented. So if you go to the next slide, please. So for the next steps on when to expect the work, uh, currently I do not have, or we do not have a uh, exact week for which this will occur, but I do expect it to occur in late June or July of this year. Uh, that said, uh, as I mentioned, ship seal is a very fast process and I would estimate that if we're looking at about a one week duration to be able to complete the major scopes of work along the, this segment of Ninth Avenue. And even though we don't have a solid date right now, we do have multiple methods we're going to use to let you know that the project is coming. Uh, if you click stuff, these methods will be put in place uh, about one week in advance of the project starting. And we'll use these, uh, the forms we'll use will be door hangers for all properties that front along ninth, this segment of Ninth Avenue. We'll have on-site message boards, which you've probably seen before on the sides of highways that will indicate the dates the construction is going to occur. And then we'll also have no parking signs uh, placed up and down the entire corridor, again, which will be dated to tell you when the work is happening. So uh, with that, we'll have you know, a vast array of different ways to be able to communicate to you once this is actually really gonna start happening with a more solid time frame. So at this point, I'll go ahead and pass it back to Erin and she'll take it from there. Thanks, Alden. Um, and thanks to Tyler and Len as well for providing uh, that great detailed information. Steph, if you want to go to the next slide, um, we're ready for your questions and comments. Um, we know we have a number of viewers on our, our live stream. So at this point, we're going to take about a four or five minute break. We'll come back around 630. Um, go ahead and call in. You'll, you'll use this toll-free number on your screen. So 1-888-788-0099. Um, when prompted, you'll go ahead and enter the meeting ID that's on the screen. That meeting ID is 812-453-24846.
if you're prompted with a participant ID, um, please use the hash or pound sign. Um, as I mentioned previously, if you're still watching the live stream, which I assume you are, um, please mute it or just um, turn it off once you call in. You'll still hear us, um, but it'll there's a little bit of a delay, so it'll create some issues if you have both going at the same time. As I mentioned, um, we don't have a time limit, but please be respectful so we can make sure to hear from everyone. Limit your initial question or comment to one or two and then get back in the queue. You'll use star nine again to raise your virtual hand. Um, and then lastly, since we don't have the ability to have a sign-in sheet in the virtual environment, if you could please state your name and address for the record, that would be helpful for us so we know um, who we're speaking with and if, if there's any um, specific areas that we need to, to follow up on. So you can state your name and address, answer your question, ask your question, provide your comment, and then we'll just make sure that we have relevant staff to, um, to answer. With that, we'll go ahead and see you in about four minutes. For the callers listening who we just let in, um, we're going to wait a couple more minutes here to let folks call in. So if you just want to hang tight for a couple minutes and we will be calling on you by the last three digits of your phone number here shortly in about um, three or four minutes. Welcome to some callers who just entered the room. I'm just going to wait um, to a few more minutes here to see if we have any other callers. So just hang tight for a couple minutes. Um, and then when we are ready to begin, we will call on you by the last three digits of your phone number. Stuff. it looks like we've um, been on break for about five minutes. I see we have a number of callers in the queue. 
Yeah, I will go ahead and take the slide down here and we will start to call on the folks. And just as a reminder, while stuff's getting set up, um, if you could state your name and address, um, you'll use star nine if you have multiple questions to get back into the queue. So you don't need, don't hang up and call back in, just sit tight on the line. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start with the caller whose number ends in 514. I'm going to go ahead and ask you to unmute yourself. You will do so by pressing star six on your phone and go ahead and state your name and address so we have that for the record and you may begin with your questions and comments. Hi, thank you. My name is Cynthia Keller. I live at 840 Gay Street. So I'm at the Southeast corner of Ninth and Gay. Um, a comment and a question. I'm excited about the emphasis on bike lanes throughout the city planning. Um, I do wish, however, that the section four was going down to three lanes. Um, we've seen quite a few accidents on the intersection of Ninth and Gay in the couple of years we've lived here and a lot of near misses. Um, so I'm wondering with that intersection in particular, are there future plans um, for improved safety um, or any other thoughts uh, long-term about section four? Thanks. Tyler or Len, do you have um, a comment or a response to that looking at Ninth and Gay? Sure, Aaron. So I think things I'd like to mention, Aaron mentioned the enhanced multi-use corridor plan earlier on. And I know through that project, there were some improvements identified for um, the Gay Street corridor, and, and there were some improvements identified at this intersection. Um, unfortunately, I don't have those in front of me. I think that with the ability of the scope of the project we were able to do this year, I'm not sure that we can implement all of that, but um, it is part of a plan through that multi-use corridor and something else we can definitely take a look at through our annual safety reviews. And we can uh, provide a link to that plan um, if you'd like to follow up. It's online, um, but we'd be happy to provide some more detailed information and think about um, you know, what ideas you have and, and what we might be able to implement in the future. So if you want to um, look us up online, I don't. we don't have a slide with our contact information. You can see all of our names here. We're all first name dot last name at longmontcolorado.gov. So feel free to, to shoot me an email and I'd be happy to um, send you a link to the plan that Tyler referenced and um, give you some additional information about what those future improvements on gay look like. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll move on to the next caller. Uh, caller with the number ending in 843. I'm gonna go ahead and ask you to unmute. You will do so by pressing star six and please state your name and your address for our record, please. Hello, uh, my name is Aton Fire. I live at 712 Gay Street. Um, so I'm actually kind of calling about the same thing about the concern of uh, the ninth and Gay Street intersection there and um, yeah, this is actually is something that I just talked to the city council about at the coffee with the council. So luckily they uh, mentioned I should show up here and thank you for the informative presentation. Um, that was great. I enjoyed all the details. Um, yeah, so I, I think I had um, maybe just a similar question and concern of just, um, especially what I'm noticing is people um, going uh, from Gay Street um, south of Ninth to Gay Street north of Ninth and um, vice versa. Um, and um, which is, yeah, which is just a problem because um, those streets don't, you know, Gay Street doesn't line up across Ninth. Um, yeah, so I, I think I had the same concern of just um, Gay Street being um, a collector street um, and seeing people using it more as an arterial road to get across town versus using Main Street in Francis. Um, so yeah, I think like Miss Color, I believe, um, I think I am, um, I was, yeah, gonna ask what, in terms of the plan 
um, would maybe be done to try to avoid um, this dangerous um, uh, just maneuver and uh, of people connecting across from gay to gay across knife. Um, it sounds like maybe this plan doesn't address it, but there'll be future. Um, maybe there's something in the future to address it. Um, I, I'm wondering too, in terms of data, um, my wife just went out there earlier this week and just stood there for 10 minutes and saw about, um, I think she said 15 cars making that maneuver. Um, I'm wondering um, just if um, you guys have any information in terms of how often people um, connect um, from Gay Street North of Ninth to Gay Street South of Ninth. Um, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Aton. Um, I think we can have Len come on and add to certainly, as Tyler mentioned, the enhanced multi-use corridor plan that we spoke about in the beginning does have some concepts for gay, and I'd be happy to, to send you a link to that plan as well if you want to shoot me an email. Um, I'll ask Len to come on and see if he has anything he wants to add um, in response to what, what Tyler already said. And then um, perhaps Tyler or Caroline might want to talk about any of the um, traffic count information that we collect from, from gay if they have anything to add. But go ahead, Len. Okay. Uh, yeah, thanks for that question. Um, one thing that wasn't completely pointed out for Ninth and Gay is for westbound, Ninth Avenue will be one lane westbound. And at this same intersection, there'll be two lanes eastbound. And there'll be a turn pocket going westbound to go north on Gay. So this will assist with some of this um, jogging of traffic, as you mentioned. Um, it does help from obviously from two lanes to one lane. So it kind of gets half of your um, requested um, uh, lanes that you're thinking about. But um, so I want to point that out. The center lane still crosses the intersection. Uh, so we still have that. But we do have only one westbound lane and a now a new turn pocket to turn north. Thanks for that additional data, Len. Um, and I'm not entirely certain if we have any additional information on, on traffic counts on gay, we could potentially follow up on that unless I see someone jump on. I certainly do not have that information, Aton, but, um, we can, we can follow up if we do have that and get that to you. I'm not, not certain if we do or not. Let's go on to our next caller. Um, and if, if there's another question, um, please get back in the queue, Aton. Um, Steph, it looks like we have one more caller. Yep, that's correct. Um, that's caller with the number ending in 772. I'm gonna go ahead and ask you to unmute and you're just gonna press star six on your phone to do so. Hi, um, my name is Sabrina Blank and I just bought the house on 1336 uh, Ninth Avenue um, between, um, I think it's Venice and uh, Francis. So super excited about this project and it going um, from the four lanes to the three lanes. Um, I have a question that probably needs to be taken offline. So I wanted to know who I should email um, when I moved in, um, I had the sewer line scoped and my sewer line is like destroyed right under the middle of the street, um, because my sewer line goes across ninth to the city main. Um, so I've gotten like multiple estimates to get it fixed. I've had the city out here twice. Um, and I'm currently talking with, um, Daniel Gorilla, um, because uh, now I actually can't get the sewer line fixed because when they were scoping the sewer line, they found that the storm line um, has an issue somewhere in front of my house around ninth. Um, and it is actually going, the water's going into my sewer line. So I know that was a long story, but basically like for me to fix that, like, there's no like lining it. So like I'm going 
to have to have like like ninth tore up basically. Um, so I wanted to know like, you know, who I should email about that. If I should continue talking to Daniel Gorilla about that. Um, I'm imagining that's, that's a little bit complicated um, because this, this all came up when I got the letter about the chip seal. Um, and that's how I contacted him. Cause I said, well, you know, if they're fixing the street, like you might want to know, like I have, all these issues going on. So um, yeah, if you could let me know who, who I can follow up with on that, that would be great. Uh, thanks, Sabrina. Um, you're right. That's pretty specific. You certainly do not want me mm -hmm. providing that information to you. Um, I'm not thinking that anyone on this call is probably your best contact, but it looks like Jim, Jim probably does have that right contact. Yeah, so what I would ask is, is Aaron was sharing email addresses out. So um, send me an email, uh, jim.stat mm -hmm. at longmontcolorado.gov. And Thank you. If, under normal circumstances, if it's a sewer lateral, the property owner is responsible from their home to the connection mm -hmm. at, the, um, at the sewer main, which I'm sure Daniel has advised you. The issue yep. is... Though if there's a if there's a water line or a not a water line but a storm sewer involved that may be an issue there, that may be something beyond your responsibility. But I would have to confirm that. But send me an email. Yeah, that's and I will. Yeah, I will that's what he said. Right, I'll get it to one of our engineers to to start looking at it, um, both mm -hmm. either command or our our sanitary sewer engineer. Thank, Thank you, you so Jim. much. Any other questions, Sabrina? No, that's it. Thank you so okay. much. Uh, well, congratulations. Very excited on your about house. the bike lanes. <laughs> Thank you. Very excited. Um, so it looks like we have, I think, um, our first callers maybe still on the line. We just want to make sure there's no additional questions or comments. And then the other thing, um, in case Aton is still listening, Phil was able to provide some general information on traffic counts on Gay. Looks like south of Ninth in the range of twenty two hundred to twenty five hundred, and then north of Ninth fifteen hundred to twenty six hundred. Um, so just to give you give you a little bit of an idea there. Any additional um, questions, comments? It looks like we don't have any additional caller stuff. Yeah, that's right. Um, if the caller with the number ending in 772, any additional questions, you can go ahead and hit star six to unmute yourself. Um, I think that's, I think that was Sabrina stuff. And I think okay. she said she was good. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll go ahead and wrap up. I just want to, again, thank everyone for joining us virtually. Um, and remind everyone that there is additional information on this project on the website. The other thing is if you have uh, friends or neighbors that may have been interested in this project but weren't able to attend tonight, the beauty of hosting a virtual meeting is we're able to record this. So this meeting um, will exist on the city's YouTube channel. So if you wanna um, listen to something that one of our uh, engineers said that you maybe didn't catch or, or again, share this with, friends or neighbors, city of Longmont YouTube channel, and you can just search for the, the Ninth Avenue meeting, it will be there. Um, if you have questions, again, our emails are firstname.lastname at longmontcolorado.gov. We're pretty easy to find on the website. Um, so feel free to reach out to us if you have additional questions that come up after tonight's meeting. And as Alden mentioned, um, there, will, there will be some additional notification that goes on as this project moves forward. So stay tuned for that. Um, again, thanks so much for joining us tonight. And with that, we'll go ahead and conclude our Ninth Avenue public meeting. Thanks, everyone.